Gunmen attacked Kabul's Ministry of the Interior Wednesday wearing U.S. Army uniforms. How easy is it to get these uniforms in Kabul? We wanted to find out. I'm J.P. Lawrence. And I'm Chad Garland here with Stars and Stripes in Kabul. You can find all kinds of things at the Bush Bazaar. One of the first things we got was some combat boots. These boots, uh, they are made by Proper. They don't appear to be uh, the official U.S. Army boots, but it could fool the, the average person. The Bush Bazaar is the kind of place where you can get all kinds of stuff like this. How much did we pay for this? These were, I believe, $20, give or take. Uh, at the same place, we also got the ACU. They actually had um, newer OCP-esque uniforms. We, uh, we are sure that those were knockoffs, but this seems to be the legit thing. The label seems similar, and it's got some wear and tear on them. The other uniforms material looked pretty authentic, but the uh, the pattern of the uniform had too much Velcro, I think, for the newer style uniforms. We were able to negotiate this down. We bought this from uh, an 18-year-old and an 11-year-old. A different shop told us that they will only sell to people who have a valid ID and a reason for buying it. Uh, but the teenagers who sold us these ACUs asked no questions as we bargained these down. General Nicholson said it's been about a year since militants used military uniforms as part of an attack. More than a year ago, it was fairly common, and going back to like 2012, Stars and Stripes was able to find these uniforms for sale at Bush Bazaar, even after the Kabul police at that time said they were cracking down. They still say they've cracked it down, they say it's illegal, and those uniforms can't be purchased in Kabul, in the open. Um, we had no problem purchasing these. We were able to buy these for 2,500 ass, which is about 40 bucks. One of the things we had uh, a lot of trouble trying to get were uh, Screaming Eagle patches, which according to some of the photos were the patches that the, that the uh, attackers were wearing on their sleeves. And there was a couple of name tapes. They did have some Afghan unit patches, uh, commando patches, and, and, and other things like that. For a little bit more, we could have gotten a tackle vest with like uh, magazine pouches and that sort of thing. After all our shopping, we got a little bit hungry, so we wanted to see what else we could find. We found a whole bunch of MREs. We each picked one. I, I got chicken noodles and vegetable sauce. I got uh, rib-shaped barbecue flavor pork patty. Um, That's not doesn't follow halal. So However, there are uh, there were kosher MREs there. And. They didn't have the wonderful DOD seal on them, so we didn't purchase those. But these were, what, 90 cents or something like that, less than a dollar a piece. Uh, resale, it does say on here, U.S. government property commercial resale is unlawful. So hopefully we don't get in trouble for purchasing these. And then for, uh, for a little dose of extra energy, we found at the Bush Bazaar this 24-pack of Rippets along with other things you can find at DFAX. These rippets, this, this case was about 12 bucks, which is about 50 cents per rippet. We asked the guy uh, where he got them. He said that he got them from someone who got them from Bagram. There is still apparently some pilfering going on. We've reached out to Resolute Support to find out if they have an estimate of how much that is. We don't yet have those figures. Back in 2012, the coalition said it was about 1% of all military shipments. That would have been about 800 truckloads at the time. And over 17 years, we've had hundreds of thousands of NATO troops and millions of pieces of inventory go through this country. So you have to imagine that uh, some of it fell off the truck and some of it might have ended up at places like Bush Bazaar. So if you wanted to outfit yourself to deceive, it wouldn't be that hard. Uh, we, we did pretty easily.